it's not too often that I come across a device with as much versatility as what we have here. This is the HS264 from QNAP, or as they call it, the world's most silent NAS. This is probably due to the fact that there isn't a single fan in the entire device. From the looks of it, you'd probably mistake it for an early 2000s DVD player that you swear you'll use again one day. It does have that same shape and size, but obviously you won't find a DVD drive in here. The 2.7 liter case comes in just under three and a half pounds, has a brushed aluminum finish and feels extremely well built. This thing will look great in your entertainment system or just chilling next to the TV. And that's a good thing because that's kind of what this is designed to do. See, this guy isn't just a NAS, but it's also a full HTPC complete with dual HDMI and USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports for connecting directly to your TV, mouse, and keyboard. Okay, but then how's it a NAS? Well, don't worry. If we pop off the magnetic front shield, we have access to two easily removable drive trays that can fit either a three and a half or two and a half inch SATA drive. Looking at the compatibility chart for this device, it looks like it only supports up to eight terabyte drives in each slot, but I don't know if that's more of an actual limitation or one of those, yeah, only supports up to eight terabytes, so don't go putting anything bigger in there. Either way, 16 terabytes of storage just chilling next to SpongeBob SquarePants is pretty dope. Powering the system, you get a four core Intel Celeron N5105 and eight gigabytes of RAM. So yeah, I've seen more raw power in the bedroom, but this device isn't really designed to be a powerhouse. The main appeal is that it's designed to be an all-in-one device, NAS, home theater PC, and home server. Yep. Believe it or not, you can make this into a pretty decent server capable of running dedicated apps from the App Store or custom services as it supports Docker right out of the box. On paper, this thing sounds like the perfect little device, doesn't it? But what's it like to actually use it? Let's talk about that. First, let's talk about the actual hardware. The build quality of this thing is actually really good. The housing is metal with plastic all around the sides, but doesn't feel cheap at all. Front cover is magnetic and locks back into place with a respectable amount of force so you don't have to worry about it wiggling around or falling off. The drives attach pretty easily to the sleds with the included screws and slide right back into place with a friction mount. The included power supply does include a power brick, so that's something to make note of, not that I think it's a big deal. Like I mentioned before, there are no fans in here for your drives or your processor, which does make the top of the unit get pretty Tea toasty. But the lack of fans are what makes it completely silent. That's what I would say if it were actually completely silent. Now, this is dependent on what kind of drives you install. If you install SSDs, then yeah, the unit won't make a peep. However, a lot of people will probably want to use cheaper and higher capacity hard disk drives, and it's no secret that those make noise. I do wish the sleds had some rubber dampeners on it so that the drives weren't sitting on bare metal as I think this would help with some of the noise. Also, it will depend on the hard drives you're using. Some are just louder than others, so keep that in mind. The IO on here is pretty solid as well, as you do get dual HDMI 2.0, USB 3.2 Gen 2, and dual 2.5 gig networking ports. Yeah, dual 2.5 gig networking. I was pleasantly surprised by this. So hardware-wise, I think it's pretty solid. Definitely not perfect, but I mean, nothing is. Let's talk about software now. This is where we get into what it's like to actually use a device. Sure, you can read off specs, but those don't mean anything if it can't perform. This device runs QNAP's QTS operating system that is based on Linux, which means you get native support for everyone's favorite platform, OnlyFans. <laughs> Docker, but more on that later. After doing some basic initial setup, like naming your device and entering your mother's maiden name, you're put into the QTS dashboard, which has sort of an Android tablet OS from 10 years ago kind of vibe. Certainly gets the job done, but could use a bit of a touch up. Poking around in here, you're gonna find the things that you'd probably expect like settings, app store, and some native QNAP apps and shit. So I'm not really gonna walk through everything because there's a lot here. The first thing you'll actually wanna do is set up your storage. I have two six terabyte hard drives in here and setting them up in a RAID 1 configuration was pretty easy using the storage and snapshots app. 
From there, you can create as many volumes with whatever capacities as you want. Once you have your volumes and you want to use it for one of its intended purposes, as a NAS, then you're gonna to wanna to set up some shares because sharing is caring. We'll first have to go into the File Stations app where we can create a dedicated folder in our new volume that we wanna share. Then we have to go into the Shared Folder section of the control panel to set that folder up for sharing. If this sounds unintuitive and overly complex, then you're right. Coming from QNAP where their main product line consists of NAS devices, you'd think that the fundamental NAS functionality would be simple and laid out all in one place, but nope. Apparently you need two apps and one settings menu just to get storage set up and shared. And this seems to be a common trend that I've found when using this device. The UI isn't the most intuitive and you'll find yourself spending more time searching for features than you'd like. Whatever, I mean, I've honestly used plenty worse UIs in my day, so I'm not gonna spend any more time complaining. Great, so we have a shared folder. In that same area, we can add users, configure privileges, and just like that, we have network attached storage available with two and a half gigs of bandwidth. You can also easily set up automatic snapshots for when you inevitably delete something that you shouldn't have. But there's so much more to this device than sharing anime with your roommate. Unlike your kid's artwork, this thing is designed to be front and center and displayed with pride. That's because it's an HTPC, meaning that this device is designed to allow you to consume media directly from the device. Just plug it in and load up one of their individual in-house apps for playing video, listening to music, or viewing photos. All right, so maybe you're hosting all your anime on here and it's time to watch it. That won't be a problem since this device does real-time H.264 transcoding, but only if you download a plugin for their video app. And wait, you have to buy a license? What the? Subscribe. Yeah, so transcoding requires a license. Now there is a free version, but it was annoying as hell to get because if you try to do it through the device, it seems like they only show you the paid option. You have to go online and dig through a bunch of crap just to get your free license. Then you can use the License Manager app, of course, another app, to input your license and watch your anime. Oh wait, it can't transcode H.265. Neat. Okay, so uh, yeah, make sure your media is encoded in H.264, I guess. At this point, I'd honestly just spin up Plex or Jellyfin, and luckily you can do that pretty easily on here. But before I get into that, let me quickly explain the whole desktop experience that they call hybrid desk station. It's basically just a small list of apps that you can run when you have a display connected with a mouse and keyboard. You get Chrome, Spotify, Skype, Facebook, and some native QNAP stuff, but for the most part, Chrome is enough for me. But overall, probably pretty underwhelming for most people, to be honest. Okay, back to running actual cool stuff on here. I mentioned earlier that the QTS operating system is based on Linux and natively supports Docker. Well, it does that through an app called Container Station. I think this is the neatest feature of the entire device. Opening up Container Station will give you a pretty easy to use UI for creating and managing your containers. You're free to quickly deploy something from their pre-configured list, which has a bunch of useful apps already like Home Assistant, GitLab, WordPress, MySQL, Nginx, and you can even spin up an Ubuntu desktop with VNC. Now, if none of these apps tickle your fancy, then you can install your own container with whatever image you want using Docker Compose. Simply steal the YAML file from your favorite tech YouTuber and paste it in the UI and boom, you're a Leap Hacker 360. This was a pleasant surprise to discover this after the lackluster Media Center experience, that's for sure. So I tried this out by deploying Pi-hole and it spun up easy peasy, no issues. There are some other cool features on here like the ability to access your system from anywhere using QNAP's DDNS, which does come in handy. You also get LDAP for all you sys admin nerds out there, UPS management, and even a reverse proxy. Although I couldn't really get this to work, but hey, you can just deploy Nginx proxy manager using Docker. So overall thoughts on this device. I think it's pretty cool, but not really for the main reason that QNAP markets it. Let's talk about the pros and cons. Pros are a convenient form factor, letting you place it anywhere in the house. Look, I know big servers are cool, but 
Lots of people work with limited space, so this is a solid option. Along those same lines, the fanless nature of it keeps it completely silent, but obviously this depends on if you use solid state drives or hard disks. The feature set on this device as a server is excellent for their target audience. This is designed for those folks who don't necessarily want to set up or manage full-fledged server with Proxmox and virtualized TrueNAS or Unraid or anything like that. Being able to easily deploy apps and containers right out of the box is extremely convenient for those of you that fall into that category. Another pro is the I.O. on here. Dual HDMI, dual 2.5 gig networking, and dual USB 3.2 Gen 2 for external expansion and even Wi-Fi dongles. And as an ass, it's solid. I mean, this is what QNAP does, so that's really no surprise. I do wish the UI was more intuitive for getting your configuration set up, but that's just how it be sometimes. This seems like the perfect transition into the cons. The UI, I'm just not a fan. As you've seen, certain settings that you'd expect to be grouped together are actually spread across multiple pages, and instead of the whole media suite just being a single app, it's actually broken out across three. Then to play videos, you need a plugin that is its own app that requires a license that also requires its own app. I think there's a huge opportunity here for someone at QNAP to revamp this entire thing. The other gripe I have here is the price, $600. I think a more competitive price given the specs and feature set would be around $400. For that price, I could still agree that the specs aren't great, but the feature set and its convenience are what you're actually paying for. At $600, I, I don't know, man, that's a tough sell. Now, if this is that niche item you've been looking for, then maybe it's for you. There's a link down in the description below, so knock your socks off. But that's all I have to say about the QNAP HS264. It's a $600 silent NAS that looks cool, can run Docker, and makes for a subpar home theater PC. Is this something that you guys would even be interested in? Let me know down in the comments why or why not. If you like this video, then drop a like below. If you like content like this, then be sure to subscribe as it helps a bunch and you get to see more of my nerdy videos. I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreons and YouTube members. You guys are my dual bay NAS with adequate snapshots and a proper remote backup. Truly one of a kind. But that's all I have for you today. If you made it this far, then I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.